There have been lions here at Longleat for over 40 years, but just over there is the deer park. And deer have been kept here since the house was first built. That's over 400 years ago. There are around 200 deer here in the park, but did you know in the forests and woodlands surrounding Longy there are probably another six to 800 wild deer? And we'll be seeing if we can track them in this week's edition of Junior Rangers. In the deer park here at Longley, there are herds of red deer and fallow deer. The deer live in this large enclosure so they cannot wander off into the countryside. At the end of the summer, the deer park is closed as the deer begin the start of their breeding cycle, which is called the rut. This is when the male deer compete with each other to attract the female deer. And as the deer park is closed, I'm heading off into the woodlands that surround Longleat in search of the wild roe deer. Roe deer are a native wild deer and they can be found living in woodlands all over the country. They are a lot smaller than the deer here in the park and they are very shy and that makes them very difficult to spot. But let's head off into the woods and see if we can find some of them. And to help me, I've met up with Tim who looks after the deer here at Longleat. Joe, we're, we're going to go and see if we can find some deer now. Um, if, if we could just, if I could just sort of say a few words to you before we start. All right. The, um, the, the idea with, when you're trying to actually go and watch deer, you, you need to be quiet on, on the one hand. Yeah. Um, you need to move very slowly mm. um, because deer have got tremendously good senses. And they panic easily, don't they? They certainly do, because I mean, if they smell us, they're very frightened of, of our human scent. Mm. And if they spot movement, they're away. So those are the two key things that we need to be very careful about, is one movement and the other, you know, not making a, a noise or anything like that. So let's head off into the woods and see what we can find. It's late in the evening and the light is starting to fade. The woods are very thick and it would be very easy for a deer to be hiding in here. It could be quite close to us and we would easily miss it. The, the wind direction's not very good at the moment. We need, we need the wind to be coming straight towards us, from, from the deer to us, not from us to the deer. So we move quietly on through the woods. And then we found our first sign of deer. Fresh hoof prints in the soft mud. Joe, come and look at this here. Now, Tim can tell this, from the hoof print which way the deer was travelling and that it was this running. It's splayed out like this, isn't it? At this time of year, because it's the because it's the roe deer's breeding season, you're finding you're getting a lot of movement of the deer because bucks are going in search of does, so they're looking around. They're they're, they're using their noses to follow the scent of the doe wherever she's been. Yeah, true. Can you see where this? And nearby, the, the further been, signs that deer may be close. Where the buck comes along and he does this, rubbing his antlers up and down, it, and it takes the, the bark off. A territorial buck will, will do this, but at the same time, he'll very gently leave his scent from scent glands on, on that, so that any other deer coming along, they can s smell this and they know exactly who it is. And it's a bit like us having a, leaving a message, you know, like uh, a post stick uh, uh, That's right, this exactly. belongs to. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. So, lots of signs, but no deer as yet. But a few moments later, our patience has paid off. Tim has spotted something.
A female roe deer and two young deer are grazing in the field at the edge of the woods. We have to be very still and quiet. But it looks like they may have heard us or picked up our scent as they soon disappear back into the undergrowth. But I'm very pleased that we found signs of the deer and then managed to see them. Another good way to track animals is to use their droppings. These are giraffe droppings and they're quite fresh. That means the giraffe must be near here. There they are. Now that was easy, but what if you were using the droppings to track a very rare and shy animal? As I found out from Ian last year, you can tell a lot about an animal by its droppings. And I also went off to find out how droppings are used to track one of Britain's most elusive animals. This is the River Test in Hampshire, and it is home to some very elusive animals, the native wild otter. Otters were nearly extinct in the UK, but on this river the Hampshire Wildlife Trust has been helping to reintroduce this rare and fascinating animal. And I've come along to meet Graham, who is studying the otters. Right, Joe, here we are, and we're right up on the top of the River Test in Hampshire. And what we're looking for today is signs of otters. And they have very, very big territories. And what we're trying to do is find ways of locating them and looking where they are. So what will we be looking for? <laughs> well, we're going to actually be looking for their otter poo. And oh. we call it spraint. And Otters are very good because they put this at special places and once we know where they are, we can actually keep going back and then we can actually record how often they visit that site. Right, what, one of the areas where we should be able to find otter spraint or otter poo is near trees. If we put a log or a big stone, they can't resist marking by it. So I think what we'll do is yeah. we'll, well, we'll go down over there and we'll have a look because hopefully they've actually left a sign I can show you. Okay. Hey, look, what's that? Well done. That actually is otter poo. So that's otter spraint, as we call it. And this is actually very fresh. And if, if I put my stick in this here, can you see it's, it's oh. moving? I expect that's been produced really in the last few hours. And so if you think that animal, which we never, never see, that it's must been have been there. here just within a few hours ago. So there's definitely one otter here. Well, it's definitely one otter. Yes, definitely. What's really interesting now you found this one, Joe, is that Normally, if I get here very early in the morning and I find a fresh one like that, I would take that away and then we send it away and we do very clever science with it. And each one of these bits of poo tells us a whole story about an otter. DNA? It, it's DNA, absolutely. And it means it can tell us if it's a male or a female. It may even tell us how old it is. And what's useful is from this, we can tell you because they produce lots of these all up and down the river. And we can tell you exactly where that otter has been in one day, which is really very important information, which we never knew before, because we never see them. You know, they're very elusive, very, very shy animals. So the spring lets us know that there are otters living in the river here, but we haven't been lucky enough to see any today. But if you come down to Pet's Corner, you'll be able to get a good look at the Longleat otters playing in their pool. The otters that live here in Pet's Corner are a lot easier to see than the ones that live out in the wild. These are Asian otters and are about half the size of the ones you'd find in the wild in the UK. Whether you live in a town or in the countryside, I think you'll be surprised how much wildlife there is around you every day. Yeah.